Hello, I'm Quentin Grafton. I'm a fellow of the Academy of Social Sciences in Australia. I'm sorry that I won't be able to join you on Tuesday this coming week. Uh, I'll be away someplace. But I do want to highlight some key issues. The first thing I want to raise, of course, is that we have anthropogenic climate change. That will be no surprise to anyone attending this event, but it's worthwhile highlighting what the cause is. This is not some random event. It's not due to sunspot activity. It's not Milankovitch cycles. <laughs> uh, this is uh, uh, absolutely due to anthropogenic climate change. Anthropogenic simply means human caused or human based. And if we go back into the record, we'll look at CO2 levels in terms of parts per million by volume. And we can see in the pre-industrial era, it's around 280, 290 parts per million by volume. What we have now today in, in, in 2020, it's around 415. And the rate that it's going, it's certainly going to be well over 500. So what are the implications of more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Well, they have heating. That's the climate change, that's global warming, however we want to describe it. And what are the consequences of that? Well, you know, we don't have to look too far into the future. In fact, we can look today, we can look into the past to see what's actually happening in terms of climate change. So we're seeing already that temperatures are increasing globally. They've increased approximately one degree, perhaps a little bit more depending which time frame you want. And they've certainly increased by that amount here in Australia. That's not just in terms of air surface temperature, it's also true in terms of sea temperatures. So you've got warming taking place in the terrestrial environment and taking place in the sea environment. You're getting thermal expansion, which is gonna to contribute to sea level rise. It'll have implications in terms of groundwater, particularly on, on the uh, sea, uh, 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 on coastal areas. Then you have a whole set of issues associated with it. Yes, we have temperature increases, but at the same time, we're going to have extreme events. So as the world uh, temperature increases, we will tend to have more of those sorts of activities in terms of cyclonic events. Those uh, events will tend to be of a, of a stronger nature and they may also be more frequent. So we know the implications of high temperatures. We know the implications of droughts. We know that very well here in Australia. And of course, we had the black summer event of 2019 and 2020. You know, we had millions of hectares of land burnt. We had thousands of dwellings and buildings collectively burnt. We had more than 30 people die and hundreds of millions, possibly well over a billion animals died. Now that's an extreme event. We all know about it. And those sorts of events will increase in frequency and possibly in intensity as we go forward in the years ahead. So, so the, the, the decision point is very clear. In 2020, we in Australia, and we globally, and it has to be done in a global context, we can make choices today to actually do something. And the to do something is involves two, two aspects of it. One is mitigation. Mitigation is about reducing the growth in carbon dioxide, methane, and other greenhouse gas emissions. And then the other one is, is adapting to, to this changing climate. So we have to do both. We have to look after vulnerable populations. We have to look at people in terms of their health. We have to be cognizant of all those sorts of issues, but we must, absolutely must mitigate. We must actually reduce our emissions over time. Australia, of course, has committed to that. It's committed to reducing its greenhouse gas emissions, its CO2 emissions, by 26 to 28% by 2030 relative to 2005. Unfortunately, that's not good enough. Uh, if we look at the, the modeling that's uh, been, we've been told, that, that that's not adequate because that, that's going to lead you know, if you take uh, the all nations together, and of course it's not just an Australian problem, it's a global problem, it leads to perhaps three, maybe more than three degrees uh, global warming. And that uh, is, could be potentially catastrophic. So we've got to do better than that. And unfortunately emissions are increasing relative to, to whatever point you want, but let's take the point of July 2014 when we rescinded the carbon price here in Australia. So uh, whether they're increasing or whether they're holding their own or static, the fact is they need to decrease and they need to decrease substantially. So every territory and every state government has signed up to a net zero emissions by 2050. We have to have a plan to get there. And one of the key planks of any plan is to actually have a price on carbon. And so that's what we must do. The science is absolutely clear. Our planet is warming. There will be more extreme events. And the uh, principal contributor is, in fact, greenhouse gas emissions that we people have contributed to in a variety of ways, including ourselves here in Australia. And of course, the third, the third aspect, and we've learned this from the COVID-19 situation, 
and uh, it becomes a cliche, but in fact there, there's an ultimate truth in it. Uh, we are indeed all in it together, and we in Australia must do our part. We must lead uh, and, and we must contribute to, to the reductions in CO2 and greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, there is no alternative, there's no planet B. Uh, this is what we must do. It's in our financial interest, our economic interest, our social interest, it's our health interest, it's in every way it's in our interest. So let's do it. Let's work a, a pathway to do that. And this is what my academy is arguing for. And it requires all of us to be part of this together. And I'm privileged to be part of an academy that takes this seriously and wants to be part of the solution and a pathway forward for Australia. So thank you.